हेलो एंड वेलकम एवरीवन दिस इज प्रोफेसर सिद्धार्थ सुराना आई होप यू गाइस आर डूइंग गुड और मैं तो हमेशा मस्त ही रहता हूं वेलकम टू एपिसोड नंबर थ्री ऑफ एमसीक्यू सीजन थ्री एप्लीकेबल फॉर मे 22 एंड नवंबर 22 एग्जाम्स लास्ट क्लास वी फिनिश्ड चैप्टर एट दैट इज असेसमेंट ऑफ बिजनेस ट्रस्ट सो नाउ वी विल गो हेड द नेक्स्ट चैप्टर दैट वी हैव चैप्टर नाइन टैक्सेशन ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट फंड इफ इन एनी ईयर देर इज बिजनेस लॉस एट दी फंड लेवल either current loss or the loss which remain to be set off who will carry forward business loss will be carried forward by the investment fund profit also fund will pay tax loss will also be carried forward by the fund if it is other heads then profit will will be passed through and loss also now we pass through the system has changed tds at dash needs to be deducted by investment fund on income credited to resident unit holder except pgbp see pgbp there will be no tds because fund will pay tax for resident unit holders the tds will be 10% investment fund which is a partnership firm earned pgbp income of 5 crores the tax payable by, by this fund will be see when the fund is a partnership firm the applicable rate is the rates in force means the normal rate of tax will be applicable if a fund is registered as a partnership firm then normal rate of tax will be applicable for partnership firm the basic tax is 30% so on 5 crore ka income what is going to be the basic tax of the firm 30% on that there is going to be 12% surcharge the moment the income of a fund exceeds 1 crore rupees there is surcharge and then you add 4% so when you apply 30% add surcharge and add cess you can check it you will get 1 crore 74 lakh 75000 72000 which of the following is taxable for investment fund all incomes no all except pgbp no only pgbp is taxable for the fund other incomes are taxable for the investors interest income received by investment fund will be dash for the fund and dash for the unit holder only pgbp is taxable for the fund so interest for the fund will be exempt and unit holder will be taxable so exempt for the fund taxable for the unit holder what is the rate of income distribution tax no income distribution tax for business trust or investment fund unit holder shall pay tax on all incomes wrong all incomes except pgbp whether distributed or not that is passed through okay see pgbp they will not pay tax so these two are definitely wrong but all income except pgbp they will pay tax only if distributed nahi whether distributed or not distributed an investment funds income comprised of the following components business income 5 crore so investment fund will pay tax capital loss 3 crore unit holders will get carry forward all unit holders have held the units for more than 12 months if it was less than 12 months so that loss is not given that means can i say if it was any other loss which is allowed against pgbp then fund will take set off carry forward kon karega unit holder so capital loss cannot be adjusted against business income and thus unit holder will carry forward so business income 5 crore taxable for the fund right capital loss 3 crore has to be carried forward by the fund wrong बिजनेस इनकम फाइव करो टैक्सेबल इन द हैंड्स ऑफ यूनिट होल्डर रॉन्ग ये बोल दिया ना इन्वेस्टमेंट फंड एंड दिस कैरी फॉरवर्ड बाय यूनिट बिजनेस इनकम टैक्सेबल फॉर फंड राइट कैपिटल लॉस थ्री करोर कैन नॉट बी कैरीड फॉरवर्ड रॉन्ग तो एक ही बचा बिजनेस इनकम फाइव करोर इज टैक्सेबल इन द हैंड्स ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट फंड राइट कैपिटल लॉस कैन बी कैरीड फॉरवर्ड ओनली यूनिट होल्डर्स इन द प्रोपोर्शन ऑफ होल्डिंग एनीवेज ऑल हैव हेल्ड फॉर मोर देन 12 मंथ्स मिस्टर बी इज होल्डिंग 5% यूनिट्स इन इन्वेस्टमेंट फंड 10% इन आरईआईटी and 7.5% in securitization trust for more than 15 months following incomes were earned by them during the year so this is income of the fund this is income of the reit and this is income of the securitization trust here i have 5% share here i have 10% share and here i have 7.5% so rent is given in reit interest from spv is given in reit these two incomes are taxable for unit holders because they are exempt for the reit then business profit is given for investment fund and securitization trust investment fund ka business profit will be taxable for the fund itself so this we have to take for our mr b this we have to take this we will not take and securitization ka to all incomes are uh, all incomes are taken by for the investor only as i explained in that uh, ddt ka uh, in that buyback tax ka discussion so this also we have to take but of course these are incomes earned by the fund the trust we have to take our share 5% 10% 7.5% other income this will be taken this will not be taken why this will not be taken because reit will pay tax on all other incomes so this is not tax for reit we have to take for mr b this we have to take for mr b this investment fund is paying tax so this we have to take and this we don't have to take 
and long term capital loss this is held for more than 15 months that means who will get carry forward mr b will get but again in 5% sharing so this is the loss of the fund he will get only 60 to 500 only 5% what would be the total income of b in 21 22 assuming that apart from share of mr b in the above income so whatever share he is getting he has only long term capital so what we will do is we will take his ltcg and we will take the other incomes from here this income we will take this loss in proportion we will take and long term capital loss can be adjusted against long term capital gain these two we will take but this we will not take and here also we will take and after taking the proportionate we will get what to take let's go income by income first own long term capital gains so you have to take and in investment fund share of ltcl will be only 5% so that will be adjusted long term loss can be adjusted against long term gain and thus taxable ltcg will be the balance if i talk about the other income ka share for investment fund except pgbp all incomes will come so other income ka 5% share will come if i talk about reit this total is 18 lakh but my share is only 10% so reit ka income 1 lakh 80000 and if i talk about securitization trust from 6 lakh my share is 7.5% when you aggregate all of this you will get 442500 and that is going to be your option on the basis of the facts given answer question 10 and 11 so small case study xyz limited created investment fund one which gives you particulars in respect of income or loss for 21 22 business income 5 lakh capital gain 5 lakh and ifos 4 lakh so all our profits if you understand that business income will be taxable for the investment fund capital gain unit holder pass through and ifos unit holder pass through and then there is mnp associates llp which has investment fund two which gives following particulars business loss 20 lakh long term loss 10 lakh and ifos profit is 10 lakh. so there is only one profit your brain will be saying that this profit will this loss will be carried forward by fund and these two will be given as pass through but what you forget in this step is that first step is set off and set off will be done by the fund after set off if there is any profit or loss then we have to decide what to do so please understand this loss cannot be adjusted so long term loss you have to directly give to unit holder to carry forward but this loss can be adjusted against ifs business loss is allowed so this requires you to have knowledge of set off chapter also if this is allowed then this is gone and this loss remaining 10 lakh who will carry forward investment fund in other words 10 lakh loss carried forward by investment fund because it is business loss 10 is adjusted against ifs and 10 lakh loss of ltcl will be carried forward by unit holder both investment fund have total 50 unit holders each having one units each unit holder of both funds carry for more than one so okay whatever is the loss other than pgpp we will give them this basically out of the above income investment fund have not paid anything to hell with it whether paid or not paid whether paid or not paid pass through will apply in investment fund during 1920 total turnover of xyz limited exceeded 400 crore it's a company no so if at all we have to apply the rate of tax normal rate so we will apply 30 and ignore the new regime that means the fund is in old regime and 30 percent in case tax calculation is asked what are the questions with respect to mnp associate so they are asking about the second one income of 10 lakh will be liable to tax and loss of 30 lakh carried forward at fund level. wrong we have already decided loss of 10 lakh for the fund and loss of 10 lakh for unit holder loss of 10 lakh will be carried forward at the fund level and loss of 10 lakh in respect of capital gain will be carried forward by the unit holder that's only the answer 20 lakh carried forward at fund level wrong capital loss will go to investors 10 lakh will ifos will be taxable for unit holder no ifos is already gone as we have decided this is only right loss of 10 lakh of pgbp for the fund and 10 lakh of capital loss for unit holder and in respect of xyz limited xyz will be liable to tax in respect of following income unit holder of xyz sorry will be liable to tax in respect of following income in respect of investment which are the incomes we have already decided capital gain and ifos will be taxable for the unit holder because business income fund will pay tax no tax liability wrong answer each unit holder will be liable to pay tax in respect of 28000 being his share of income Achha, they are asking per unit holder so we have to use this data 50 units 50 unit holders that means 10 plus 4 14 lakh divided by 50 will be taxable income of per unit holder so accordingly you get 28000 here and 28000 only is taxable for the unit holder because pgbp will be taxable for the investment fund so this appears to be right each unit holder will be liable to pay tax of his share of 20000 for capital gain no ifos also is taxable 
and 38,000 also wrong because PGBP is not taxable. So capital gain and IFOS ka total divided by 50 unit holders that 28 will be taxable. On the basis of given facts, answer question 12 to 15. So again a case study. Investment fund 1 incorporated in India has 35 unit holders, each holding 2 units. So total 70, 35 unit holders. Particulars of investment fund are as follows. Business income, who will pay tax? Investment fund. Long term capital gain, who will pay tax? Unit holder. And IFOS? Unit holder. Another investment fund 2 in the form of a company, this has 50 unit holders having 4 units. So one has 35 unit holders, one has 50 unit holders. All unit holders have held for more than one year. So, in case there is a loss, we will be used. We will be using this data. In case there is a loss, they have held for more than one year. Business loss, who will carry forward? Investment fund, long-term capital loss, unit holder, and IFOS. So, similar question. First, we will adjust this. Then this will go away, and this will remain four lakh, which will be carried forward by the fund, and this will be carried forward by the unit holder so it's a similar question let's see four things are asked with respect to investment fund one so first one they are asking 42 lakh is taxable for the investment fund no investment fund will pay tax only on 14 remaining 28 will be taxable for unit holder 120 is taxable in the hands of each unit holder so again they are asking per unit holder what is this total 21 plus 7 28 28 divided by 35 unit holders what do you get 28 lakh divided by 35, 80,000 are and what are they saying? 120. So, this is also wrong. This is also wrong. 21 lakh is taxable in the hands of investment fund. Wrong. Capital gain will be taxable for unit holder. Only 14 is taxable. This is also wrong. So, 14 is taxable in the hands of investment fund and 80,000. That's 28 lakh pass through karke divide by 35. This is the right option. What is the applicable rate of tax on the component of income of investment fund in the hands of the fund? Investment fund ka income is only business income and this fund is incorporated in the form of LLP. If this fund is incorporated in the form of LLP, that means that business income will be taxable at the applicable rate of fund that is 30% plus CES because it is only 14 lakh rupees. With respect to investment fund 2, we decide kar liya. 4 lakh loss for the fund and 20 lakh loss for the Unit holder and again unit holder 50 hai toh you can divide by 50 toh I think 40,000 per unit holder milega in case they ask per unit holder. So 10, 4 lakh for the investment fund and 40,000 for individual unit holder. Let's see. 6 lakh is taxable as I, rubbish. IFOS is gone set of can. 24 lakh after setting business loss can be carried forward by the fund. Wrong answer. Business loss 4 lakh by the fund. Right answer. Capital loss 40,000 for every individual because we will take the loss of 20 lakh divided by 50 that apparently appears to be right but let's see business lock 10 lakh carried forward by fund wrong because already adjusted so this only is the remaining answer in previous year 20 to 23 means next year bol raya, pay careful attention if fund 2 has business income of 15 lakh matlab current year this is the position these losses are being carried forward next year business profit is 15 lakh and long term capital gain of 25 lakh Business profit is 15 lakh next year and long term capital gain 25. So, first we will adjust the business loss brought forward and 11 lakh will be taxable for the investment fund. And as far as 25 is concerned, this to directly pass through to the unit holder divide by 50 karoge. So, I think 50,000 rupees you will get. So, investor ke liye, we have already given him capital loss of 40,000. Next year he will get capital gain of 50,000. Per investor, aap bologe to 50,000 will be the answer and investment fund ke liye. Business loss 4 lakh will be adjusted against business profit. So, next year brought forward 4 lakh adjusted. So, 15 minus 4, okay. This 11 lakh will be taxable for investment fund and 25 lakh me unit holder. But then they are asking total income of the fund only. So, fund ke liye 25 lakh will not be taken. Only 11 lakh will be taken as the income. And that is your answer as far as your chapter investment fund is concerned. These are our MCQs of our chapter assessment of investment funds. Let's go ahead. Next, dividend and bonus tipping. When it were both dividend bonus, at that time it was a little big. Now it's only bonus tipping. So very small. Bonus units are applicable. Once bonus units are allotted, which provision will be applicable? 94.8. 94.8 is applicable on shares, units, both or none? Only on units. Jab 94.7, it was applicable on both shares as well as units. Loss of 94.8 shall be ignored. Kitna, how much loss we ignore when we sell original units? 
full ignore because we make it cost of acquisition of bonus so full ignored on original units because it will be made cost of acquisition of bonus loss under 948 shall become cost of what shall become cost of the remaining so we ignore loss of original and make it cost of acquisition of the balance bonus unit so cost of acquisition of the balance bonus unit under 948 to apply the purchase has to be within how much time before the record date purchase within 3 months prior to the record date and sale within 9 months after the record date so they are asking you basic questions purchase within 3 months and sale within 9 months after the record date is going to be your answer and accordingly that's your chapter assessment of uh, investment funding uh, the bonus dividend and bonus stripping we now come to a very very important topic that is assessment of partnership firm the next few chapters here are going to be very very important the partnership firm charitable trust at least these two big chapters we will finish in today's episode then time permitting see political party electoral trust are very small so most likely we will finish that also mat we may not be able to start mat we will do in our fourth episode that we will see let's go ahead for the time being assessment of partnership firms and aop some questions very easy some questions very difficult okay rate of tax applicable for partnership firm abhi kya bolne ka option also is not required 30 percent which of the income is not exempt share of income of member from huf it is exempt because huf has paid tax share of income from partner it is exempt because firm has paid tax salary received by partner is pucha kya not exempt not exempt means our answer will be c what is surcharge applicable to firm if it is 80 lakh ka income individual ko 10 percent aayega but firm ke liye there will be no surcharge because company firm ka surcharge starts after income of 1 crore surcharge applicable to partnership firm if income is exceeding 1 crore will be 12 percent only one rate of surcharge 12 percent Conditions to be fulfilled so that partnership firm can be assessed as partnership firm. Deed in writing. Vina deke bhi you can actually say section 184 ka condition. Deed in writing. Copy of deed to income tax department. Manner of sharing profit. So deed in writing. Basis of sharing profit. Instrument should be given along with first return of income. Which of the following condition revised partnership deed should be filed along with the return. If there is change in constitution. If there is any change in remuneration. Any change in profit sharing ratio anything changes then the income tax department should be aware that your deed is changed and thus in all the cases you will have to furnish how will the residential status of the firm be determined status of partner rubbish senior most partner no we have to decide control and management if control and management is exercised from within india x is a partner in a partnership firm he devotes five hours for working in the firm rest of the hours in a company in which he is a director then mr mr q guys mr x no, X ka bolke Q ka pushta hai. Then Mr. X will be considered. See how many hours is given is not important. Is he participating in the day to day activities? Then he will be treated as a working partner. Ramu partnership firm paid 6 lakh to its non working partner as remuneration, which is authorized by partnership deed. Book profit is 15 lakh. What will be the allowable remuneration under PGBP for Ramu? Some are like, eh, chal chal jaldi jaldi kar. Actual 6 lakh. As per deed, assume 6 lakh. Authorized as per deed, the ABA which is authorized, and then apply the Ari Pagal non working partner. And once it is a non working partner, focus karna no deduction. Interest is allowed whether working or non working, but remuneration is allowed only if it is working. Ramakant Fonsekar is a director in a company PQ Limited, and PQ Limited is partner of a partnership firm LPG. Means, aap chronology samjho. X is director in a company and company is partner in the firm. And Ramakant is also employee. Matla, what is the status of Ramakant? He is director in the company and employee in the firm and company is shareholder in the firm. And he received remuneration of 7 lakh. Book profit for the year is 10 lakh. What will be the allowable remuneration deduction? Your brain may be probably telling you, Chalo, calculate karte. actual 7 lakh as per deed. But please understand employee and if he is an employee then the limit of 40b cannot apply the limit of 40b is applicable only if the payment is made to partner in other cases the entire amount is going to be fully allowed who among the following are eligible to become partner individual can become partner company just because i am karta somewhere i can still become partner all of them brought forward business loss will not be deducted while calculating book profit absolutely true because book profit under partnership is only pgbp income in mat it is all heads of income and then in that 14 adjustments on the less side we automatically adjust brought forward losses as per accounts but here in partnership it is only pgb 
A and B entered into partnership agreement on firm 421. As per deed, each of them will be entitled to salary of 2000 per month apart from profit. So that's their remuneration as per deed. On 1821, they executed a supplementary deed by which they increased it to 3000, which will be effective. Matlab, they are making another deed and increasing the remuneration retrospectively. So, deduction of 3000 will be available from which date? Dekho, if this is allowed, no? So, people will start modifying their partnership deed retrospectively from 1947. Please understand, your deed is modified on 1st August. That means the additional deduction ka calculation will also be allowed from 1st August. If an individual is a partner in a firm in representative capacity, not in his personal capacity. Matlab, my HUF is the partner and I only represent my HUF. I am not the partner. Then interest paid by the firm to such individual me in his personal capacity shall be Limit is applicable only if pay is partner. If HUF is partner and interest is paid to me, then 40B ka limit is not applicable, fully allowed. According to 40B, interest at 12% is allowed, but that interest should be income tax, generally tax only. Simple interest except for refund ke chapter mein ek Narendra Doshi ka Supreme Court ka case law hai, Supreme Court ka. Otherwise, in income tax, you will find simple interest. Remuneration and interest received by partners or partnership firm as per 40B will be taxable under which head? It will be taxable under PGBP because for the partner it is his business. Salary received by working partner of a partnership firm under 40B will be taxable. Salary has to be paid only to working partner and it will be taxable under PGBP. Salary received by sleeping partner will be taxable. So no, sleeping partner means firm will not get deduction. And if firm will not get deduction, that means the partner does not have to pay tax. Interest is paid to an individual partner who is not a representative partner and interest received by him on behalf of another person who has lent money. Matlab, the receiver is not the partner. He is only receiving on behalf of the other person. So, interest is not being paid to partner and if it is paid to anybody else, 40 be not applicable. If a partnership firm incurs loss, who will get carry forward? Obviously, jiska loss, uska carry forward firm. If remuneration is paid to partner is disallowed in the hands of firm, then remuneration will be dash in the hands of the partner. Remuneration for the partner will be taxable only if the firm gets deduction. Agar partner ke disallowed, agar firm ke disallowed, to partner ke it will be exempt. In case of dissolution of a firm, who all will be responsible? Who started the firm? Who were partners at any time? Nobody will be responsible. Okay. Persons who were partners at the time of dissolution or discontinuance. The erstwhile partner because the dissolved firm will be deemed to be in existence. In case of AOP, if individual share of any member is not known, then AOP will pay tax at MMR. This few small questions some students were asking because we cover AOP and partnership in this chapter as far as MCQ is concerned. As far as our subjective classes are concerned, AOP is not as important as firm. So, discussion mein jada aata nahi, but short note I will tell you. AOP ka normally rate of tax is what? Slab. Same slabs as individual 255 lakh, 10 lakh and there is no regime, new regime. But if this this is a general rule you can write it anywhere in your notebook but if the shares of member are not known means we don't know what is the profit sharing ratio of member or any individual member ka income any individual member has got income more than basic exemption limit individual member ka income is exceeding more than, it is more than basic exemption limit to fir jo aop ka tax rate ho jayega na the tax rate will become MMR. Normally, AOP will not pay MMR. Normally, AOP will pay tax at slabs. But in two cases, mein AOP MMR bhare. There are two cases where tax rate of AOP will be MMR. One, when the share of members is not known. At that time, AOP will pay MMR. And second, when the share is known and any of the individual partners is earning income in excess of basic exemption limit, then MMR will be applicable. 24. Abhi samaj gaya? In 23, therefore, it will be MMR. Khan is an AOP in which Salman and Amir Khan are members. Their shares are known. Matlab, this point is not applicable. Total income excluding share of AOP of Salman is 260 and Amir is 240. Is there any member exe income exceeding more than basic exemption? Income exceeding basic exemption? Yes. Then, AOP will pay tax at MMR. So, if the AOP ka income is 50,000, AOP will apply MMR on 5,50,000. The tax applicable will be, as you know, MMR is 42.744 percent. Apply 42.744 percent on 5 lakh 50 thousand, and you will get. If you apply MMR, you will get 235 
0.92. So that is going to be your answer to question number 24. Under which of the condition AOP is not required to pay MMR? If individual share of member is not known, then it is required. So wrong answer. If individual share of member is known and total income of any member exceeds the basic exemption limit. Wrong. If it exceeds then MMR. If individual shares are known and total income of any member does not exceed basic exemption limit, then AOP is not required to pay tax at MMR. If AOP has not paid tax on its total income, then share of AOP in the hands of member will be. See, AOP will pay tax, then member ka share will be exempt. But if the AOP will not pay tax, then member ka share is going to be taxable. State whether true or false. If AOP has paid tax at MMR, then of course, member share will be. In that case, it is going to be exempt. BN Associates is a firm consisting of two partners B and N sharing profits in the ratio of 60% and 40%. Income of the firm for previous year 21-22 is 6 lakh and their income other than income from the firm amounted to 1 lakh and 120 respectively. Calculate the income tax to be paid by B. N ka to they are not asking only but if I talk about B, his income is 1 lakh and he will also get 6 lakh ka share but hello 6 lakh ka share is going to be exempt. And 1 lakh is below the basic exemption limit. Accordingly, tax of B will be. In fact, both of them, ISCA tax is also going to be 0. If there is any mutual concern, ordinarily there should be no tax arising on profits out of mutual. Obviously, you cannot, basically this statement means for those who do not understand. You cannot make profit by transacting with yourself. You cannot make profit by transacting with yourself. True. In case of a club, any surplus accruing to a member from club to a member club from the subscriptions and charges various conveniences by the members is not an income this is decided in a couple of case laws there is a case law in cooperative society venkatesh cooperative society it was held that surplus received from member is not treated as income same is the case of this transfer fees cooperative society from incoming and outgoing member is going to be exempt in case of transfer of capital asset by partner to firm partner to firm means 453 that means we will be taking the value recorded in books of accounts in case of chem transfer of capital asset by firm to partner now when firm is making transfer to partner we have to check whether it's a case of 9b or 45 for all that discussion that we did that is why i told you to do the revision come amendment lecture first if it's a case of dissolution that means it will fall in 9b 45 4 is applicable only in case of reconstitution so if it's case of dissolution directly 9b fair market value will be taxable as sale consideration under capital gains in case of firm has capital gains which of the benefits will be available these benefits are available to all SSEs. in case of firm violates 184 conditions it will be considered as firm for all provisions no it will be considered as aop for all provisions no. it is still a firm but only for one purpose it will be aop which is that only purpose 40b deduction it will be considered as firm for all provisions but aop for the limited purpose of disallowing 40b a firm consisting of three partners change PSR from 2 is to 2 is to 1 to equal. This is an example of very easy change in constitution. In case of change in constitution, there will be on the firm one assessment or two assessments. In case of change in constitution, it will be one assessment. But in case of dissolution, there will be two assessments in case one on the successor, one on the predecessor, one on the successor. In case of a firm, liability of tax payment is on only firm partner with highest net worth all in PSR all the partners joint and several there is no joint and several liability in LLP false LLP also has joint and several liability but if the partner proves that there was no negligence on my part then he can escape 40b in case of a firm after dissolution liability for payment of tax will be on whom all partners with respect to asset taken over no dissolved firm will be deemed to be in existence so joint and several no need to pay tax rubbish that partner who continues the business wrong all partners joint and several as dissolved firm will be deemed to be in existence if a partner of llp proves that liability is not due to his negligence llp partner has this facility he shall be absolved of joint and several he is still liable he is liable to the extent of share of profit still liable still liable no partner of llp is going to be absolved of joint and several liability if a partner of normal firm proves that liability is not due to his they go LLP ka partner has the facility, but normal firm ka partner does not have the facility. So he shall be absolved is wrong. Liable for entire tax liability? Nahin. Liable only his share? Nahin. He is liable to the extent joint and several. Any income received after dissolution of the firm 
will be taxable for whom? For the firm? No. Firm is treated as in existence only for recovery, not new income. Shall be taxable for the receiving partner. Any income received after dissolution shall be taxable for the receiving partner in which hand? There is no firm now. So, it has to be taxable under IFOS. Interest under 40B will be allowed if paid to active sleeping both or not? Interest is allowed if both paid to both subject to 12% per annum. Simple interest. Maximum limit for interest deduction under 40B is 12% simple compound. 12% per annum. Simple interest. Interest deduction under 40B will be actual amount. Amount as per deed 12% per annum simple interest out of them. Whichever is the lowest. A firm can pay maximum 12% interest. No. A firm will get deduction of maximum. 12%. Payment can be anything. Deduction will be maximum. 12%. Remuneration under section 40B will be allowed if paid to. See, interest can be paid to both. But remuneration will be allowed only if it is paid to active partner. Any remuneration paid to sleeping partner will be fully disallowed. Remuneration deduction of a firm with book loss of 40B will be. If it is book loss, you like an idiot, don't give direct answer 150. 150 is the third limit. The other two limits, actual, authorized or 150, whichever is lower. That limit is still going to be applicable. A firm having book profit of 8 lakh under 40B and as per deed paid remuneration 4 lakh to working partner and 2 lakh to sleeping partner. 4 lakh to working partner and 2 lakh to sleeping partner. What will be the deduction? Actual remuneration 4 lakh. We will take only 4 lakh because we will be taking only the working partner, sleeping partner. Ka nahi. It is authorized by deed also. Second limit is this also. But what will be the third limit? First 3 lakh ka 90 percent, 2 lakh 70 and balance 5 lakh ka 60 percent, 3 lakh. So, total is coming to 5.7, 4 or 5.7 out of the 2, whichever is lower and thus the allowable remuneration is going to be 4 lakh rupees. A firm having book profit of 8 lakh under 40 B as per deed paid remuneration of 6 lakh this time to working partner and 2 lakh to sleeping. So, this will be ignored. This is same calculation. Instead of 4 lakh, we will take 6. So, pagal ki tarah 6 don't say allow. This becomes 6, but it will be compared with 5.7. So, it is going to be this time 5.7. A firm having book loss of 8 lakh under section 40 B has as per deed paid remuneration of 60,000 to working partner and two. So, book profit is again same. So, that 5.7 will be same. But what is the actual 60? Don't go mad. If the actual is 60, sorry, it's not book profit, it's book loss. It's a case of book loss. But book loss may directly you can't give answer. 1 lakh 50. It is going to be 60,000 as per deed 60,000 or because it's a case of book loss. So, 1.5 lakh. So, the answer is going to be whichever is lowest, whichever is lowest. Firm having book loss of 8 lakh has paid as per deed remuneration of 2 lakh 60,000 to working partner. So, this time what will be your answer? 260 actual as per deed 260. Third limit 1 lakh 50,000. This time out of the 3, whichever is lowest will come to 1 lakh 50,000. In case of dissolution of firm and discontinuance of business, stock will be valued at. Do we now know? Firm and AOP, whenever dissolved, whether business is continued or discontinued, stock valuation will always be done at net realizable value. In case of dissolution of firm business being continued by individual partner, then in that case stock will be valued at, in that case also it will be net realizable value. Swift Traders is a partnership firm which furnishes the following figures. It has dissatisfied the conditions enumerated in section 184. Business income before deduction of salary and interest to partners is 450. So, before deduction, we just have to give deduction. And as per books is done, only less as per tax is given. Interest to partners at 18%, 1 lakh 10 and salary to working partner 272. Compute the taxable income. E pagal log. If you take 450 and then you say interest within 12% means 110 is 18, then 12 is how much? And then salary. So, marega buri tarase. Because if the firm has dissatisfied, the conditions that means it is a firm but it will not be eligible for 40b deduction and if it is not eligible for 40b deduction that means it will directly pay tax on 4 lakh 50 thousand the firm is ineligible for deduction and thus it will be directly paying tax on 4 lakh 50 thousand 60 
Swift Traders is a partnership firm which furnishes the following figures. This time it has satisfied the conditions enumerated under section 184. Other data is same. Business income before deduction is 450. So they have given information about interest and salary. Only change being now that 184 ka condition is satisfied. So 40B ka deduction will be available. So we have to take 4.5. Give interest deduction within 12% limit. Give remuneration ka deduction as per applicable limit and find out what is the taxable income. So what is the PGBP given to you? 4,50,000 before deduction. Then talk about interest. If 1,10,000 is 18%, then 12% will be how much? You can do that unitary method. Cross multiplication, you will get 73,333. That will be your profit before remuneration deduction. We also call it book profit. And now what is going to be the deduction of salary? Now some people, they directly apply this. 3,90,000, balance ka 60. They get 3,16 and they choose 3,16 as their answer. 3,16 cannot be the answer. Because the actual salary is only 272. So it will be only whichever is lower. And 104,667 is going to become our answer. This is in fact a question that we do in our normal class also. In subjective question. In Manikchan partnership firm, Popatlal is one of the partners whose capital is 1 lakh in the firm. Firm gave interest on capital at 30%. Popatlal received 30,000. Of course, 1 lakh ka 30%. So 30,000. What will be taxable? Firm will get deduction only of... 12% if the firm will get deduction only of 12% that is 12,000 that means the partner will pay tax only on 12,000 and even if the partner is receiving 30,000 18 will be exempt because partner will pay tax only see simple if 30% is 30,000 then 12 is how much 12,000 will be allowed to the firm so taxable for the partner 18,000 will be disallowed to the firm so exempt for the partner accordingly 12,000 will be taxable, 12,000 will be taxable and 18,000 will be not taxable. Mrs. A, wife of Mr. B, Mrs. is A but she is wife of Mr. B, is a partner in a firm. Her capital contribution of 5 lakh to the firm as on 1421 included 3 lakh contributed out of gift received from her husband. So, whatever is the capital on the first day of the year, 3 lakh is received from husband, 2 lakh is own contribution. The firm paid interest on capital 60,000 and share of profit 50,000 during the year 21-22. The entire interest has been allowed as a deduction. If the interest is allowed as a deduction, that means this 60 will be taxable for the receiver. If the firm is getting full deduction, partner will pay full tax. But what you need to understand is, partner will pay tax only on this 60. This 50 will not be taxable. I require to give you no explanation here. Because share of profit is exempt. In this 60 also, the full amount cannot be taxable for her. Because in business income, whenever there is a contribution received from spouse, then it has to be apportioned in the ratio of capital on the first day of the year. Out of 60,000, 60, 60%, 60 that is 36,000 will go under clubbing and husband will pay tax. And only 40%, that is 24,000 is going to be taxable for this assessee. 60% will be clubbed and 40% she will be paying tax. Share of profit is exempt but interest on capital is taxable. Fully taxable? No. Share of profit is exempt. Interest of 40,000 is taxable for Mr. B and 20,000 for wife. Wrong. We did 60,000 in the ratio of capital. So, 60, 40, 36 and 24. Share of profit is exempt. Interest of 36,000 is includable for husband and 24 for Wife, 36,000 ka clubbing and 24 for his wife. Presumptive taxation under 44 AD is available for resident firm or non-resident firm? Only for resident firm. Presumptive taxation only for non-resident. Resident individual, resident HOF, resident firm not being LLP. Difference in normal form. In LLP. So, only resident firm. Presumptive not resident normal firm. Re presumptive 44 AD is available only to normal firm, not available to LLP. 44 ADA. Now listen, this is the amendment. Now, this is how revision come amendment lecture helps you. If you were observing last year's question or last year's book, 44 ADA was available to both. Only in AD they said form excluding LLP. But now, as per amendment in 44 ADA, resident individual, resident form excluding LLP. In other words, now this answer, which was both last year, will become only normal form. Loss of an outgoing partner other than unabsorbed depreciation. Shall be carried. See, unabsorbed depreciation will remain with the firm. But what about other loss? 
loss of an outgoing partner, no carry forward to the firm because partner has left and no carry forward to the partner also it is going to lapse. UAD of an outgoing partner will not lapse that can be carried forward by the firm. And now we have a case study based question. Question 68 to 72 when you make correction in the printed book by mistake it is written question 68 to 71 but it is still 72 it's based on the case study so 68 69 70 71 72 five questions are based on a case study very big case study very complicated case study you make silly mistake you are gone five questions on a case study lpg a partnership firm is engaged in business of manufacturing of garments it furnishes you the following data credit side simple hai. only turnover is given 2 crore 55 lakh debit side expenses 2 crore 36 lakhs interest to partners including 1 lakh 20 thousand paid to gopal for loan given by gopal huf that means listen total 540 is paid to the partners but in that in that 120 is paid to huf partner is only acting on behalf so if at all we apply 40b this is what you need to know that 40b is applicable only if a is partner so what we will do is we will divide Actual interest paid to partner and actual interest paid to HUF. HUF ka 1 lakh 20,000 you know? out of 540, 120 is paid to HUF. That means partner ko we have paid only 4 lakh 20. So if at all we apply the limit of 40B, whenever and wherever we apply the limit of 40B, we will take actual interest as 420. This will not be subjected to 40B. This will be fully allowed. Only this will be subjected to the limit of 40B. Then Salary to partners is given. So, there is Jay, Gopal and Madhav. Three partners. 30,000 per month for Jay. 28,000 per month for Gopal. And 16,000 per month for Madhav. If you multiply them. 30 plus 28 plus 16 into 12. You will get your 888. And you are getting a net profit figure. Of course, in computation, this is the starting point. We will disallow this remuneration. And calculate the allowable remuneration. We will disallow only this interest. I hope you have understand. 120 will be allowed. 420 will be disallowed. And within the limit of 40B, we will allowed and that is what is going to be tested in this question the partners share profits and losses equally so they are all equal partners okay during the previous year 2021 that means we are talking about last year because this is 21 22 so last year the firm had incurred business loss of 3 lakh and uad of 150 so last year ka loss ka data is given what was last of uh, loss of last year business mein 3 lakh uad of 150 so total loss of 450 on 1421, Mr. Jayesh, a partner, died and his legal heir, Mr. Jay, got admitted on the same day. That means this Jay is legal heir of Jayesh. Matlab, can I say Jayesh is continuing in the form in the form of his legal heir Jay? And another partner, Mr. Raj, also retired. So understand, please. Last year, understand these two points and understand. Last year there was Jayesh, Gopal, Madhav, and Raj. Four people, Jayesh, Gopal, Madhav and Raj. Four partners last year and we suffered 3 lakh ka loss, 150 UAD. Then Jayesh died but he got replaced by his son Jay. That means he is continuing in the form of his legal end. But Raj left and no one came. That means there were four partners. Jayesh is continuing in the form of legal hair. Gopal and Madhav are anyways continuing and Raj has retired. What will be the impact? The impact will be loss pertaining to an outgoing partner no carry forward to the firm except UAD. Means if we talk about UAD, this will be fully carry forward. But out of this 3 lakh, the share of Raj will lapse. And this is where this point will help you. Equal. Equal means there were 4 partners last year. See, this year there are 3. Last year there were 4. Jayesh, Gopal, Madhav and Raj. So out of 3 lakh, if you divide by 4, can I say Raj ka 75,000 will lapse. And therefore 2 lakh 25,000 can be the brought forward for the current year. And this also will be brought forward. I hope you understand. Last year ka 3 lakh ka loss mein Raj ka share will lapse because loss of outgoing partner. No carry forward. Jayesh ka son is continuing. So Jayesh ka loss will not lapse. Correct? Only Raj ka share will lapse. But UAD will not lapse. UAD fully allowed. So if I ask you what will be the allowable brought forward loss with the help of these three adjustments. Allowable brought forward loss. Business ka 225 and UAD full. Mr. Madhav is not actively engaged in conducting affairs while Jay and Gopal are actively engaged. Matlab, this remuneration will be fully disallowed. Only Jay and Gopal ka remuneration will be taken. Interest at 16%. So, whatever interest is being paid to the partners, this 420. 
एंड सिक्सटीन परसेंट वॉज पेड फ्रॉम फर्स्ट जुलाई तो लेसन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल टोटल इंटरेस्ट गिवन इज वन लैक ट्वेंटी वन लैक ट्वेंटी इज फॉर एच यू एफ टोटल इज फाइव फोर्टी इन दैट वन ट्वेंटी इज फॉर एच यू एफ दैट मीन पार्टनर को कितना दिया फोर ट्वेंटी दैट फोर ट्वेंटी वॉज पेड एट वॉट रेट सिक्सटीन परसेंट फ्रॉम विच डेट जुलाई एक्चुअली क्या है क्वेश्चन हैज नॉट गिवन अस द इन्वेस्टमेंट ऑफ द पार्टनर इफ इन्वेस्टमेंट वॉज गिवन वी वुड हैव अपलाइड ट्वेल्व परसेंट पर एन इन्वेस्टमेंट इज नॉट गिवन बट दिस डेटा विल हेल्प यू टू फाइंड आउट इन्वेस्टमेंट वॉट एवर इज द इन्वेस्टमेंट ऑन दैट वी गेव सिक्सटीन परसेंट फ्रॉम जुलाई दैट मीन नाइन मंथ दैट मीन इन्वेस्टमेंट इन टू सिक्सटीन परसेंट इन टू नाइन बाई ट्वेल्व इज फोर ट्वेंटी बाई फोर ट्वेंटी बिकॉज वन ट्वेंटी स्पेड टू एच वी आर कंसर्न ओनली ऑन दार्टनर्स दैट विल गिव अस द कैपिटल एंड दैट विल हेल्प अस टू find out 12% per annum simple interest we know that 16% will not be allowed we know that we have to restrict it to 12% the clause for the same was however entered in the deed on 1st january acha to when you calculate as per deed at that time you will take only from january so you'll find out the capital using this data then calculate as per deed from 1st january calculate as per deed from 1st january okay and then actual is still already given there are three limits for interest actual which is 420 come on as per deed which we will calculate for 3 months and 12% per per annum simple interest that we will have to find out by using the capital which we will find out from this formula i'll show you the calculation i have already solved it gopal relinquished his title in a land in the name of lpg for consideration of 18 lakh which was duly recorded in books of account so transfer of asset by partner to firm value recorded 18 lakh rupees stamp duty value was 20 lakh rupees theek hai matlab there is a land which is transferred by gopal to the firm now comes the questions what would be the interest expense which the firm can claim as deduction for ay 20 to 23 one thing we know that 540 will not be allowed what will be the interest expense we will have to apply 40b limit but please pay careful attention 40b limit will apply only on 120 i hope you understand this will not suffer 40b 40b is applicable only pay is partner so huf ka 120 pe no 40b limit. 40b will apply only on 420 but for that to apply the limit we will have to do our calculation that's our very first question also here very first calculation that i have done for you this will give us full okay so what is the total interest paid 5 lakh 40 as i told you paid to huf will not be considered for the purpose of 40b so 420 i have already found out now this is the formula that i was talking about question has not given us the capital amount but you need to know a little maths to find out whatever was the partner's capital we have paid 16% from 1st july that means capital into 16% for 9 months is 420 why 420 because 120 is huf so if you simplify the equation so capital will be 420 into 100 by 16 into 12 by 9 and with this we come to know what is the investment of the partners 35 lakh to calculate our 12% per annum simple interest it will be useful and now we can apply our 40b limits actual interest 420 which we already know as per deed 35 lakh ka capital 16% is allowed as per deed but it is allowed from january as per deed deed was done on january to deed ka jo calculation hai that will be capital into 16% from january you get 140 and now we will apply 12% simple interest there is one basic point tested one in depth point tested here 12% simple interest is per annum and our deed has authorized interest only from january so when we will take 12% per annum 35 lakh ka 12% we cannot take from april because deed did not authorize we cannot take from july we have started paying but deed has not authorized we can take only for 3 months so 35 lakh 12% Three months and accordingly, one lakh five thousand being the lowest of the three will be your forty b interest allowed. Forty b me kitna interest? One lakh five thousand. Or koi koi bacha dekhega na? So one lakh five thousand is available in the option also as b. First of all, to get one lakh five thousand also, you can make mistake. I am sure that you will not make this mistake. You know that whatever is paid to huf will not be taken for forty b. I am sure you will not make this mistake. Then four twenty year you will correctly take. you may find a little tricky to find out the capital but little mathematical common sense you will use so you will find out the capital and with which i am sure you will be able to calculate this also as per deed this 
also you will do but please be careful that you have to take only for three months and accordingly you will get 105 105 is there in option you get a feeling that you should choose 105 as the answer khatam tata finish bye bye gaya इंटरेस्ट एक्सपेंस बोला इंटरेस्ट एक्सपेंस अंडर फोर्टी बी नहीं वॉट इज द टोटल इंटरेस्ट एक्सपेंस अलावेबल बेस्ड ऑन फोर्टी बी पार्टनर के लिए वी अप्लाई वन जीरो फाइव बट अदर देन दिस वन जीरो फाइव द अमाउंट पेड टू एच यू एफ इज फुल्ली अलाउड डू यू अंडरस्टैंड दैट सो दे आर नॉट आस्किंग यू वॉट इज द इंटरेस्ट इफ आई चेंज दिस क्वेश्चन वॉट इज द इंटरेस्ट अलावेबल एज पर फोर्टी बी देन आंसर इज वन जीरो फाइव ऑप्शन डी But the question is saying, what is the interest allowable, which will include your 40B ka 105, and it will also include your HUF ka 120, 105 plus 120, 225. All those who were getting bored, kya sir easy easy MCQ you are doing, normal form LLP, ye sab kya karwa raha hai? Abhi, abhi, take this MCQ lecture seriously. Agar easy question you take seriously, then you will enjoy these difficult questions also. So 105 as per 40B and 120 of HUF total 225 will be allowed. The business loss and UAD allowed to be set off. Already we have discussed UAD full 150 will be allowed. So these two are wrong. And business loss, if there is an outgoing partner, so its share will lapse accordingly 225. This we have written also. So no problem only. So current year whatever is our income, in that we will adjust brought forward loss of 225 and brought forward UAD of 150. What would be the business income, Ayla? You know what? Business income मतलब computation करने का. अभी computation मतलब start with net profit as per P&L 472. Add back this interest. Here you will not add back 120. 120 is allowed. You will add back only 420 because from that we will give deduction of 105. Please understand. We know that interest allowed is 225, but when We are doing 40B ka calculation. At that time, we will disallow only partners wala part. So we will allow also only partners. Add 420, then minus only 105. Only partners part because HUF is already debited, debited and allowed no effect. Simple baat bolta hu. This is debited and allowed no effect. This is debited and disallowed. So add 420, and then when you give deduction, you give deduction only of that because HUF ka already taken. This fully added. Then apply remuneration. मतलब basically here you have to do the remuneration का calculation. Without that business income कैसा मिलेगा? So you have to do the remuneration का calculation. Do you understand that? After giving interest का deduction, you will get book profit. Do remuneration का calculation. याद रहे माधव का remuneration will be fully disallowed. So we will take only Gopal and Jay, and we will get our remuneration deduction, and we will get our business income. Correct है? चलो So what is the business income? Four options are given. Six thirty six zero four four one two five twenty nine. Let's see how to calculate. How will we calculate? Net profit as per profit and loss account four lakh seventy two given. Interest to partners. Be careful attention. I am adding only four twenty because I will give deduction also only of one zero five. H U F K is neither added nor subtracted. Total interest allowable if they ask you of course two twenty five. But in forty B we will take only one zero five. Remuneration also we add. So these things you add you get this total. Interest we allow. This becomes our book profit. In book profit, we will take deduction. First three lakh ninety percent. Balance thirteen point whatever is remaining. You apply sixty. You get ten ninety five. But the actual remuneration only of Jay and Gopal. Madhav is sleeping partner, so we will take only of Jay and Gopal. Actual remuneration of Jay and Gopal six ninety six. Lower of the two six ninety six nine seventy nine is your answer. Koi ko bolta sir. We have given interest ka deduction remuneration ka. We are getting only nine seventy nine. 979 तो ऑप्शन में भी नहीं है सर अभी ये भी तो है दीज आर ऑल्सो अलावेबल लॉसेस नो ब्रॉड फॉरवर्ड लॉस विल बी एडजस्टेड अगेन बिजनेस ओनली नो सो आफ्टर एडजस्टिंग योर लॉसेस ऑफ टू टू ट्वेंटी फाइव दैट इज बिजनेस लॉस एंड वन फिफ्टी ऑफ यूएडी यू विल बी लेफ्ट विथ सिक्स लैख फोर थाउजेंड विच इज गिवन इन योर ऑप्शन सी अरे समझा क्या मजा आया हा वॉट वुड बी द कैपिटल गेन टैक्सेबल इन दी हैंड्स ऑफ एल पी जी अस्यूमिंग दैट लैंड अक्वायर फ्रॉम गोपाल सो गोपाल से लैंड खरीदा था एटीन लाख रुपीज 
was sold on 28 February for rupees. Make that correction. If it is printed 25 lakhs in your book, correct it to 26 lakh. Make this correction, please. 26 lakh. To Mr. Jack, FMV and stamp duty value are 30 and 20. See, if we are selling land, it is actual or stamp duty value, whichever is higher. So, first of all, FMV is ignored. And in actual and stamp duty value, there is a safe harbor if the difference is up to 10% of actual. That is why I am making you do 26. If you get 25, hota, 10% per 2.5, hota, to fir wo difference more than 10%, then 28 will become your answer. But in our case, we will take the sale consideration as 26. 26 ka 10% karoge to 2.6. So the difference is within 10% range. If the difference is within 10% range, so this will be selling price. Cost price to iska 18 lakh thai. And thus, 8 lakh will become your taxable capital gain. 8 lakh will be taxable capital gain for the firm. How much salary can the firm claim as deduction? Are wo to humne already kar diya. When we calculated income, we have already calculated that the salary allowable is 6 lakh 96 thousand. That we have already solved, boss. Already solved. Correct? In this solution only you will get it. That was your case study 68, 69, 70, 71, 72. And this is an independent question, not a part of the case study. Messrs. AB Associates is an AOP consisting of two members A and B, both sharing in the ratio of 1 is to 1. The net profit as per PNL for the year ended 31st March 22 is 5 lakh. Expenses of 40,000 debited to PNL are disallowable. Other income of A and B, other than income from AOP, amounted to 2.3 and 2.6. Ah, matlab share is known, but one of the members have got. Profit exceeding basic exemption limit. Matlab AOP will pay tax at MMR and member will not pay tax. Which of the following statements are correct? Share of income of AOP is included in the hands of the members. Not included. AOP will pay tax at MMR because this is more than basic exemption. AOP ka MMR lag gaya, member will not pay tax. So, one is wrong. Abhi one kidar kidar hai. So, this option, this option cancel. Share of income from AOP is not included in the members. So, ye right hai. Matlab B and C both are possible. Both members are eligible for that 86 ka exemption because AOP has paid tax. So, 3 is right. And if 3 is right, then B has to be our answer. Because 3 is also right. 3 wrong hota, then C would have been our answer. Tax liability of both A and B is nil. Yes, A ka to below basic exemption. B ka more than basic exemption B. Fir bhi because of rebate, it will become 0. So, 4 is also right. Tax liability of A is nil and B is 19. Rubbish. Dono ka nil. That's our chapter. Assessment of partnership firms. Big chapter and it took more time because of, of course, the case study involved while doing the question. But now we have done the case study. So, I hope you are comfortable. We will go ahead in our life. We have plenty of time in today's lecture. Religious trust, so we are definitely completing. Then we will see. Time raega, to political party electoral trust, to pakka complete karenge. Matt AMT, dekhenge. We will see. Assessment of religious and charitable trust. State whether true or false. Subsidy or grant received by uh, central government for the purpose of Corpus of trust or institution from central government or state government is not an income. To any contribution by central government is not going to be any contribution towards corpus, anyways, is not going to be treated as income. Income received by any university existing solely for educational purposes and not for profit, exempt under 1023C, if the aggregate receipt do not exceed amendment above. It was 1 crore. So, last year ka answer kuch aur tha, but now the amended limit is 5 crore and thus the answer changes. Shire last year ki book mein answer was C because the limit was 1 crore. But now there is an amendment which is why I say that pehle revision amendment ka lecture karo then come to this class. So, 5 crore. Koi ko bachche ka to revision amendment pending chal raha hai. So, God alone knows now when they will complete. Isle I made prior announcement that every day 9 to 11 am log ye karega na. So, things will get proper. Entities registered under section 12AA, 12AB on the condition that such registration will become inoperative will be entitled to claim exemption under section 10 for. Dekho, 12AA, 12AB liya to section 10 not allowed, exception hai on the condition that that registration is inoperative. So, 1023C you can take, 101 also you can take and 1046 also you can take all of the above. Time limit for making an application for grant of exemption under 1023C by university is this is for your knowledge before the tax audit ka due date matlab one month before the due date of 
रिटर्न फाइलिंग तो यू हैव टू मेक एन एप्लीकेशन अप टू थर्टी एथ सेप्टेम्बर विच ऑफ दी फॉलोइंग इंस्टीट्यूशन इज एक्म फ्रॉम टैक्स इंस्टीट्यूशन फाइनेंस बाई गवर्मेंट यस हॉस्पिटल फाइनेंस बाई गवर्मेंट यस ओनली फॉर एजुकेशनल पर्पज इज यस एक्जाम फॉर टैक्स फॉर ऑल ऑफ दम Trust engaged in advancement of any other object of general public utility will not be entitled to get exemption under Section 11 if commercial receipt is exceeding 20 percent का limit है. Commercial activity has to be related and within the limit of 20 percent. Trust is an obligation annexed to ownership and arising out of confidence deposit. Person who accepts the trust, whom do we put the trust on? That person is called the trustee. Approval granted for exemption given to university will be withdrawn if not applied income in accordance with the provisions. Of course. Activities are not genuine, of course. Activities are not being carried out on the basis on which it was notified, of course. And that means, can I say any of the above? Then your registration or exemption can be cancelled. Ram Charitable Trust has its main objective as relief of poor. It used entire income of sixty lakh derived from an activity in the nature of trade for its main object. Should the utilization be treated as charitable purpose, you can have. business income or trade or anything but you use the money for charity and in relief for the poor it is relevant that you use it for charity only in advancement category it has to be related activity and within 20% limit related activity within 20% limit only in advancement in all other cases you just use your money for charity that much is enough state whether true or false voluntary contributions are not a part of income gadeda biggest source of income is that absolutely rubbish next exemption to trust will be available only if income is applied for charitable purpose charitable purpose does not include kya charitable nahi relief of the poor hai yoga hai preservation of object of artistic interest all of them are charitable purpose so does not include ka answer will be none of the above exemption to the trust will be available only if exemption to the trust will be available only if income is applied for charitable purpose charitable purpose includes commercial coaching music concert nahi but yoga to hai na to yoga 85% of the income needs to be applied in order to get exemption under section 11 but this 85% can also be accumulated for a period dekho jab bhi they ask you in theory your answer will be fine practically we know that it is added in the income of the 6th year so you can spend in the 6th year or 7th year up to the due date yes but on paper answer will be five only krisha charitable trust earned income of 25 lakh but in previous year it actually received 1568 and applied in full Remaining 932 was not received the income. This amount of 932 will be deducted. Yes, because if it is not received, you can neither apply nor accumulate. When taking exemption under 11, which of the following things are not allowed? Depreciation if cost is claimed, right? Exemption under section 10 is not allowed with some exceptions. They have written 10, 1, 10, 23. See, deficit brought forward. Pay attention. It's also an amendment that brought forward deficit will now not be allowed. In other words, all of the above. Anonymous donation received by trust established wholly for charitable purpose would be taxable at wholly charitable purpose के लिए anonymous का provision is applicable and thus thirty will apply. If it is religious, then not applicable. Which of the following cases accumulated income shall be deemed to be income? Accumulated income is applied for other than religious or charitable. Yes. Accumulated income ceases to remain invested in eleven five. Yes, that means violation हुआ. Accumulated income is not utilized for the purpose for which it was accumulated. That is also right. Accumulated income is credited to any unregistered trust or institution. That is also right. Accordingly, all of the above. When will income of trust not be eligible for exemption? When income from property held under trust is used for private religious trust purposes, Section 13. Benefit of a particular caste community again, Section 13. Impermissible investment modes. Yes, that means all of the above. 115 BBC 30% is not applicable. बोला रे not applicable. Pay careful attention. Charitable को applicable. Religious को not applicable. So both and none cannot be the answer. It has to be B. Gopal Charitable Trust provides free medical facilities to trustee of the trust. Whether the registration can be cancelled? Yes, because exemption will be withdrawn. Registration also can be cancelled. When is tax on accredited income levied? When there is conversion of trust into form not eligible. मतलब मर्जर विद नॉन चैरिटेबल एंटिटी में भी मर्जर विद एंटिटी नॉट हैविंग सिमिलर ऑब्जेक्ट्स यस व्हेन देयर इज नॉन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ एसेट्स और ऑन डिसोल्यूशन विद इन अ पीरियड ऑफ 12 मंथ्स फ्रॉम द एंड ऑफ द मंथ इन व्हिच डिसोल्यूशन टेक्स प्लेस ऑल ऑफ द अबव विल ट्रिगर एग्जिट टैक्स अक्रेडिटेड इनकम ऑफ अ ट्रस्ट शैल बी टैक्सेबल एट 30% प्लस 12 प्लस 4 फॉर द पर्पस ऑफ ट्रस्ट बिकॉज़ दिस इज द सरचार्ज दिस इज कॉल्ड एमएमआर नॉर्मली एमएमआर इज 42.744 बट ट्रस्ट में सरचार्ज एग्जिट टैक्स के केस में 12 and thus MMR ka definition normally is 42.744 here it will be this 
state whether true or false exit tax is payable even if no income tax is payable yes even if there is no income tax exit tax will be payable accreted income means aggregate fair market value of assets minus the total liability yes that is the net worth trust shall be liable to pay tax on accreted income to credit of government within how many days 14 days nahi to uske upar kya lagega interest is going to get attracted public charitable trust registered under 12 aa for previous year ended 31st march 22 derived income 10 lakh from properties held by trust and voluntary contributions from public 15 lakh out of which 8 lakh was applied for charitable purpose i think 10 lakh is property income 15 lakh is contribution 8 lakh is applied and 4 lakh towards repayment of loan taken for construction of orphanage which was not treated as application when spent from loan money so this is also testing you on the amendment when you take a loan and use that money for any expense that is not treated as application because you use loan money but when the loan will be repaid at that time it will be treated as application so this time 8 lakh and 4 lakh will be application to ye pagal ki tarah 25 minus 12 equal to taxable income mat bol dena how will you calculate your taxable income property income plus voluntary contribution total 25 lakhs you don't have to show individually you your mcq here 25 is the total 10 plus 15 15% exemption 85 and then application of 8 lakh and loan repayment 12 lakh 9 lakh 25000 9 lakh 25000 is going to be your taxable income 9 lakh 25000 will be your taxable income kamla charitable trust registered under section 12 aa having its main objective as medical relief earned capital gains on buyback of unlisted shares of public sector company as it accepted the buyback offer what is the capital gain 3 lakh company will pay a buy 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 buyback tax so 1034a hota hai na an agriculture income 4 lakh during previous year 21 22 which of the following is correct main aapko yaad dila do a trust registered under this provision is eligible ineligible for section 10 exemptions but 10 1 will be allowed but this is which one 1034a this will not be allowed 10 1 10 23 c 10 46 3 are allowed rest are disallowed yes or no so can i say trust can claim exemption of agriculture income but not this trust has to apply such income for charitable purpose to claim exemption no agriculture blanket exemption trust can claim exemption under 1031 and 101 and 34a wrong trust can claim exemption under section 1034a rubbish trust can claim exemption under b a hi bacha hai to wohi answer hoga but 101 in respect of agriculture income without applying such income for charitable purpose on condition that 12 aa becomes inoperative obviously wo jo 3 10 mein you get no 101 10 23 c 10 46 only if it becomes inoperative however it cannot claim exemption in respect of capital gains under 1034 a wo apply karna padega application if you do then you will get it which of the following is not included in income corpus is not included we know but anonymous included business included non included only corpus for claiming exemption a trust must register file roi maintain books of course all of the above all allowable modes of investment are units of uti allowed unsecured loans to trustees rubbish shares of public sector means government company government company allowed this also allowed this also allowed matlab only two is not allowed 1 3 4 and 5 registration application should be made to whom cit ao finance minister registration with the cit and form number 10 for accumulation to the ao a trust has to apply dash percent of its income for full exemption agar pura income ko exempt karna hai to how much you will have to apply 85% apply full income exam for deduction application of income can be for revenue capital corpus to other trust revenue allowed capital allowed but corpus to other trust will not be allowed so 1 and 2 going to be allowed for deduction a trust can make application of income up to due date of return filing yes current year and as well as due date of return filing both are going to be allowed for availing the benefit of accumulation trust must file roi on time and furnish form 10 on or before the due date both conditions are required to be fulfilled capital gain of a trust will be long term after dekho trust mein long term short term jaisa concept hi applicable nahi trust will lose exemption files related roi yes private religious yes benefit of founder trustee yes in all the cases in which of the following cases not just exemption is denied but cit can also cancel registration char case hai private religious purposes particular caste community creed benefit of specified person and non specified investment so related roi nahi advancement nahi private religious purpose is the case where registration can be cancelled deduction from anonymous donation we get a deduction no pura 30 nahi lagta we get a deduction 5% of total donation or 1 lakh whichever is ye bahut bada case hai 
it's a tax benefit and it is possible that you don't pay attention and go wrong 5% of total donation or 1 lakh whichever is higher 5% of the above donation will include normal also anonymous and in fact ICI ke suggested case after the corpus is also included which asset is not immune from exit tax matlab exit tax lagega dekho teen asset immune hai agriculture ka asset exemption not taken ka asset and dissolution mein transferred asset so agriculture is immune so it's not our answer they are asking not immune exemption was not claimed is immune transferred within the prescribed time for dissolution immune asset received as gift not immune a public trust providing relief for the poor derives income net of expenses 30 lakhs corpus donation 12 lakh ye to income mein aayega nahi it invest entire corpus donation in bank deposit and does not spend at all it accumulates 10 lakh out of 30 lakh for a specified purpose within the objects and informs the ao accordingly by furnishing form number 10 oh after the due date of filing roi the roi was filed on time is line ka importance is this form 10 after roi after the due date so accumulation ka benefit not available but will we get application will we get 15% yes roi is filed on time roi late then we lose everything roi filed on time that means we will get application and 15% we will just not get accumulation and out of the balance a sum of 14 lakh is spent towards the object of the trust so that is application which we will get however in this 14 lakh also 1 lakh is paid to consultant in cash so that pgbp ka disallowance will allow will be applicable so 14 ka deduction nahi milega we will get only 13 and 3 lakh of rent on which tds is not deducted so again 30% disallowed 1 lakh disallowed because paid in cash and 3 lakh me tds not deducted so 30% so total 190 disallowed in 14 may say you get only 12 10 ka deduction so you will not get accumulation but return is on time so you will get 15% and application but you will not get 14 lakh may say 1 lakh and 30000 yahan pe yahan pe fully disallowed yahan pe 30% what is the taxable income then let's solve net income given to you 30 lakh corpus to lena nahi hai don't forget 15% exemption from 2550 we will not get accumulation why because it was belated so accumulation ka benefit not allowed एप्लीकेशन 14 मिलेगा बट इन दैट फोर्टी ए थ्री डिस अलाउड बिकॉज पेड इन कैश एंड थर्टी परसेंट डिस अलाउड फॉर दिस सो ओनली ट्वेल्व टेन अलाउड एंड आफ्टर टेकिंग ट्वेल्व टेन यू विल गेट थर्टीन लैक फोर्टी एज योर आंसर थर्टीन लैक फोर्टी इज गोइंग टू बी आंसर टू योर टैक्सेबल इनकम लैंड अक्वायर्ड बाई ट्रस्ट फॉर सेवन लैक इज सोल्ड फॉर ट्वेंटी टू पॉइंट फाइव लैक एंड ट्रस्ट एज एक्सपेंडिचर ऑफ फिफ्टी थाउजेंड दैट्स ट्रांसफर एक्सपेंस Assuming that the trust acquires another asset for twenty-two lakhs, then what will be your capital gain? देखो, this is GSC, this is transfer expense. So what is the net sale consideration? Twenty-two lakh, and new asset acquired for twenty-two. Is entire net sale consideration invested? Will entire capital gain be exempt? Yes, if entire net sale consideration is invested, entire capital gain will be exempt. नहीं तो क्या होता है? It's not proportionate. It's cost of new minus cost of old. Correct? So. NSC is invested. Twenty-two is NSC. Twenty-two is invested. Full capital gain exempt. Trust. If a land acquired by trust for seven lakh is sold for twenty-two point five, and expenditure is fifty. So once again, NSC is twenty-two, and cost of acquisition was seven lakh. That means capital gain coming is fifteen lakh rupees. Twenty-two is sorry, our gross sale consideration twenty-two point five minus transfer expense zero point five. So net sale consideration twenty two minus cost of acquisition seven. So capital gain fifteen lakh. This time the new asset acquired is of eighteen lakh. So this time we have not invested entire NSC only eighteen. So will we get full fifteen exempt? Fifteen exempt नहीं होगा. Will it be proportionate? No. What will be our exemption? Cost of new minus cost of old. Cost of new minus cost of old. Exemption will be cost of new minus cost of old. मतलब eleven lakh exempt and four lakh will be your taxable capital. ये भी अपने classroom question subjective में भी do. Four lakh is going to be your taxable capital gain. So, the charitable trust, a charitable trust under section twelve A, has sold plot acquired two years back. Purchase price was two lakh. Sale consideration for three sixty. Sum of ten thousand was transfer expense. An immovable property was three. So, see, three sixty is gross sale consideration. Ten thousand is transfer expense. Net sale consideration three fifty. Cost of acquisition two lakh. So, pehli baat to capital gain is coming to one fifty. Gain kitna hai? 150. Now check. Will we get exemption? If entire NSC 350 was invested, then full exempt. But entire NSC is not invested. We have invested 310. Then what will be our exemption? Exemption will be 3 lakh 10,000 minus cost of all 2 lakh. 1 lakh 10,000 will be exempt. How much will be exempt? 1 lakh 10. How much will be taxable? 
वन लैक टेन एग्जाम बिकॉज कॉस्ट ऑफ न्यू माइनस कॉस्ट ऑफ ओल्ड वन लैक टेन थाउजेंड एग्जाम फोर्टी टैक्सेबल अभी फोर्टी टैक्सेबल है और आपने आंसर में ये चूज किया ना यू आर गॉन रे पागल बिकॉज क्वेश्चन इज आस्किंग अमाउंट एग्जाम यर दे आस्ट वॉट विल बी द टैक्सेबल कैपिटल गेन यर दे आस्ट वॉट विल बी टैक्सेबल गेन यर दे आर आस्किंग अमाउंट ऑफ एग्जामेशन इफ दे आस्क एग्जामेशन यू हैव टू चूज बी एज योर आंसर इफ दे आस्क टैक्सेबल गेन देन दिस विल बी योर आंसर इफ दे आस्क एग्जामेशन दिस विल बी योर आंसर फ्लैट टैक्स ऑफ थर्टी परसेंट अंडर सेक्शन वन वन फाइव बीबीसी इज एप्लीकेबल ऑन होल्ली चैरिटेबल ये रिलीजियस एंड चैरिटेबल इफ अनोनिमस इज रिसीव फॉर एजुकेशन एंड मेडिकल ये होल्ली रिलीजियस नो रिलीजियस एंड चैरिटेबल इफ अनोनिमस इज रिसीव फॉर अदर देन एजुकेशन मेडिकल नो मतलब वन एंड टू पे एप्लीकेबल थ्री एंड फोर पे नॉट एप्लीकेबल वन एंड टू के ऊपर इट इज गोइंग टू बी एप्लीकेबल फ्लैट थर्टी परसेंट अंडर वन वन फाइव बीबीसी इज नॉट एप्लीकेबल सेम फॉर ऑप्शन आर गिवन अभी दिस टाइम इफ दे आर आस्किंग नॉट एप्लीकेबल दैट मीन्स अवर आंसर इज गोइंग टू बी थ्री एंड फोर इफ दे आस्ट एप्लीकेबल दैट मीन्स इट वॉज वन एंड टू एंड इफ दे आस्क नॉट एप्लीकेबल दैट मीन्स इट विल बी थ्री एंड फोर हेल्प एड चैरिटेबल ट्रस्ट रजिस्टर्ड अंडर सेक्शन ट्वेल्व डबल ए रिसीव डोनेशन ऑफ एटी लैक्स आउट ऑफ विच टेन लैक वॉज कॉर्पस डोनेशन एंड ट्वेंटी लैक वॉज अनोनिमस सो ब्रेकअप बोलू तो टेन कॉर्पस ट्वेंटी अनोनिमस एंड फिफ्टी नॉर्मल फिफ्टी नॉर्मल एंड ट्वेंटी अनोनिमस विल बी टेकन इन इनकम But 10 corpus will not be taken. So total we will take 70. We will remove this. 70 lega. In 70 maybe 50 is normal, 20 is anonymous. And trust applied 40 lakh towards objects. The tax liability pucha hai bro. Tum pagal ki tarre. If you calculate the income, no, you will be gone. Liability is asked. Income hai kya? They have given only one income. So what we will do is we will solve it. And here you will realize that there is a controversy. That the amount that we subtract from anonymous donation, five percent of total donation or one lakh, whichever is high, we add in the other income, for which there are two options and which option to follow. Institute ka actual question in recent article. Let's see what do they do. First, we will take donation of only seventy lakhs. Why only seventy lakhs? Because ten is corpus. Corpus is not included in donation. And seventy we will divide into anonymous and normal. Abi normal me we will get fifteen percent application everything. In anonymous, we have to apply flat thirty. But do we apply flat thirty directly? No, we give deduction. Five percent of total donation. Total donation includes normal, anonymous, and now corpus also. Institute ka suggested bolta hai that bhale you take seventy year, but total donation me you'll take corpus. So five percent of eighty lakhs, four lakh or one lakh, whichever is higher. So four lakh will be our answer. Four lakh will be subtracted from anonymous. Sixteen lakh ke thirty percent pe. Four eighty will be your tax on anonymous. Anonymous me we will subtract. 5% of total donation or 1 lakh whichever is higher and balance 30 but the amount which is getting subtracted will get added to the other income and as per law there are two options add here at the top or do everything and add at the bottom two options abhi historically when institute used to give suggested answer they used to allow both in subjective answers they used to say you add at the top then also allowed you add at the bottom then also allowed but now in mcq there can be only one option If you add at the top or bottom, tax will change. An institute's suggested answer is on the basis of this being added at the top. So whatever we are subtracting from anonymous will get added in other income at the top here. From 54 lakh, we will get 15 percent, and here we will subtract application. This 590 will be taxable at slabs. You apply the slabs, you will get 30,500. 480 plus 3500. This will be basic. This will be says, and this is the suggested answer given by institute. If institute is giving this suggested answer, that means two things are clear. One, here they will take total donation. Total donation means here they will take corpus also. Even if corpus is not included in income, they are taking here. Second, the amount that we are subtracting from anonymous, which gets added to the other income, it will get added at the top. Institute wants you to follow this system. The law is not clear, but as per institute, you follow this system, then only you get the right answer. Simple. A charitable trust was created on one four sixteen with the objective of relief for the poor. It applied for registration on first November seventeen. The application was not disposed by the commissioner even after expiry of six months from the end of the month, which is the allowable period. Whenever we apply, supposingly we apply on a date tenth February, CIT has to register. Time limit is end of the month and six months. Six months from the end of the month. If by that date the CIT does not pass his order, मतलब one thing is clear, the trust is deemed to be registered. If the CIT does not pass his order, मतलब the trust is deemed to be registered. Trust का registration हो गया है, the trust will be treated as deemed to be registered. Are we clear on this? 
ऑल ऑफ अस लेकिन कौन सी डेट से नॉट फ्रॉम वेन यू अप्लाई और नॉट फ्रॉम वेन यू क्रिएटेड रेट्रोस्पेक्टिव तो है ही नहीं प्रोस्पेक्टिव प्रोस्पेक्टिव ऑल्सो द इफेक्टिव डेट ऑफ रजिस्ट्रेशन विल नॉट बी डेट ऑफ एप्लीकेशन फर्स्ट नवंबर यू अप्लाई वॉट इज द टाइम अवेलेबल टू दी आई टी सिक्स मंथ फ्रॉम द एंड ऑफ द मंथ सो एंड ऑफ नवंबर थर्टी एथ नवंबर फ्रॉम दर सिक्स मंथ मीन्स डिसंबर जनवरी फेब्रुवरी मार्च अप्रिल मे सिक्स मंथ अवेलेबल इफ द सी आई टी डज नॉट पास एनी ऑर्डर टिल थर्टी फर्स्ट मे दैट मीन्स ट्रस्ट इज डीम टू बी रजिस्टर्ड बट इफेक्टिव डेट विल बी फर्स्ट जून द रजिस्ट्रेशन विल कम इन टू फोर्स फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट डे आफ्टर एक्सपायरी ऑफ सिक्स मंथ Yes, you are deemed to be registered, but from first June. Since application has not been disposed of by the CIT, trust is not deemed to be registered. Wrong. No decision means registered. Application has not disposed of within the time the trust is deemed to be registered from this date. Sawali ne. Prospective registration, retrospective is not possible. Application has not been disposed of. Trust is deemed to be registered with effect from application. Ye bhi nahi. The application is made in November. Expiry of six months happen on thirty first May. Trust will be deemed to be registered on first June two thousand eighteen, and accordingly from AY eighteen nineteen. मतलब it is entitled to take benefit from AY. This is a correction from AY nineteen twenty. Yeah, you can make either you make this nineteen twenty or you make this PY. Any one of the two things you can do. एक काम करो, एक काम करो. Do one thing. Make this PY. Make this PY eligible from PY. 1890 from the year of your registration when an income is derived from property held under trust wholly for charitable or religious purpose and shares of beneficiaries are not known and whole or any part of relevant income is not not exempt under section 11 or 12 if the share of beneficiaries are not known then mmr like aop is going to be applicable which of the following statement is correct in case of charitable trust claiming exemption under section 11 and 12 Asset purchase can be claimed as application of income, and trust can also claim depreciation. Correct statement? Is wrong. Repayment of loan can be utilized as the application of income in subsequent previous years if expenditure was not taken as application of income. This is an amendment. When I take loan, I use that money, not treated as application. But when I repay the loan, it is treated as application. So apparently, this looks like right. Trust running hospital will be denied entire exemption if it conducts free operation. No, only that much will be disallowed. So wrong. Anonymous donation shall be taxable for religious trust. Wrong. Anyways, we have decided this is only right. A charitable trust registered under Section 12 AA with effect from 1410 during 1718 received a specific corpus donation for construction of building, which was claimed as exempt under Section 11. Why it was claimed exempt? Because corpus donation is not taxable only. Now during 1819, it desired to claim depreciation on such building. As application of income is that valid? Mentally you will say, sir, sir, no, not valid, sir, not valid, not valid. So no, we got corpus donation; it is not taxable. With that money, we buy a building. If you use corpus donation for that, then application of income is not treated. But when you repay that corpus money, then it is treated as application. But here the question is not about purchase of building. The question is, can I claim depreciation? Confusing, yeah. You will have to pay careful attention. When is depreciation not allowed to trust? Only if the asset is claimed as application of income. Then depreciation will not be allowed. If the cost of asset is not claimed as application of income, if the kya bola cost of asset is not claimed as application of income, then ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the trust can. And here. Because it was corpus, so taking application was not allowed. And then the trust, if application was not taken, if application building cost of acquisition was not claimed as application, then depreciation can be claimed. This is also your right answer. Depreciation cannot be claimed is wrong. Discretion is wrong. Depreciation can has to be claimed. Has to and there is no restriction. ऐसा भी नहीं. There is a restriction that if you don't claim application, then depreciation will be allowed. And we have not claimed application of income, and thus depreciation will be allowed. Registration of trust will be registered valid forever. False. Abhi as per new rule, every five years. Registration of a trust will be valid for a period of five years. But provisional registration for a newly created trust will be valid for three years. A trust whose registration is about to expire has to apply at least how much period prior? At least six months prior to the expiry. If a trust adopts a modification of objects, then it will have to register within a period of apply for fresh registration within a period of. 30 days modification of object kiya to 30 days so that was our chapter religious and charitable trust we have time we will go ahead 
small chapters only 13 and 14 assessment of political power political party should maintain record of each voluntary contribution is excess of what is the limit any contribution in excess of 20000 then record has to be maintained which of the following condition are required to be fulfilled by the political party for availing the benefit of exemption maintain books of accounts audit furnishing of roi as per time limit all of the above which of the following income of ram mandir sena a political party will not be exempt agar condition fulfilled to rent exempt interest exempt voluntary contribution by check is kele exempt but whether you fulfill condition or you don't fulfill condition pgbp is always going to be chargeable to tax which of the following heads of income is exempt for political party all exempt nahi pgbp always taxable so all wrong pgbp wrong to ifos pe to exemption milta hai so that will be your answer political party is not required to maintain records of donor contributing more than 20000 if the amount is received own member nahi check nahi cash nahi electoral bond mein records of donors not required otherwise records of donors have to be maintained even a political party fulfills all conditions pgbp will be taxable even if political party fulfills all conditions pgbp will be taxable true hai political party has to register with election commission lok sabha speaker president of india or permission from mukesh bhai political party under representation of people act has to register with the election commission of india political party will get exemption if donation exceeding 2000 is received in cash nahi milega bearer check not allowed only account pay check account pay draft electronic mode and electoral bonds political party will lose exemption if donation exceeding 2000 is received in neft chalta hai bearer check not allowed cash not allowed when both are right your most appropriate answer will be d so very easy very small chapter assessment of political party and electoral trust to very small chapter anyway so quickly we will finish voluntary contributions received by an electoral trust shall be exempt if the trust distributes dash of the aggregate donation minimum distribution has to be 95 percent state whether true or false electoral trust shall not accept contribution as ca in cash true they have to allow they have to take in three modes but this is not given in the act this is given in the rules electoral trust gets exemption from all the incomes no if conditions are fulfilled voluntary contributions will be exempt if conditions are not fulfilled voluntary contribution will be taxable but other income will be always taxable other income may koi bhi exemption prescribe nahi kiya gaya that's our chapter electoral trust well we may not be able to do the questions of minimum alternate tax considering the remaining time that we have today it's a big chapter but at the same time i don't want to leave you also and consequently what we will do is a sensible thing instead of mat we will complete amt today and in the next chapter mat will be done so volume one will get over and then we will have uh, your it authority search and seizure all those topics starting so first question of amt page number 58 provisions of amt would not be applicable to an individual hof aop by whether incorporated or not or ajp if the adjusted total income does not exceed what is the threshold adjusted total income up to 20 lakh amt is not applicable Rahul Patrawala LLP engaged in manufacturing of semiconductor wafer fabrication unit has total income of 78 lakh after taking 35 AD deduction and the deduction is taken on two assets new machinery on 5th June 10 lakh and old building on 18th October 1250 these two deductions you have taken calculate adjusted total income. what is adjusted total income that net taxable total income as per income tax provisions which is given to you add back the 35 80 deduction 35 80 how much you must have taken 100 percent so 2250 so 78 ke under you have to add back the 35 80 deduction taken if you add 78 ke under 2250 you will say sir hamil ha, 1 crore 50 no this is the deduction you have to do net of depreciation so on both these assets assets you must have foregone depreciation building there is some depreciation much uh, machinery there is some depreciation you forego so you don't add full 20 to 50 you add back the net of depreciation and in that deep deep depreciation points are tested deep deep let me show you how entity i given to you is 78 lakh we are saying add back the deduction taken under section 35 80 20 to 50 that's the total cost but we have foregone depreciation in case of plant and machinery purchased on 5th june for 10 lakh rupees that means 10 lakh ka 15 percent and additional depreciation also because the assessee is in manufacturing so 10 lakh ka 20 percent 
total depreciation for one on plant and machinery it is possible that you forget the additional part you will lose marks so 15 normal and 20 additional and as far as building is concerned 1250 only normal but here it will be half because the building was purchased on 18th october so for building it is going to be 1250 ka 10% ka half 60 to 500 this is the total depreciation for one this is the net adjustment and thus 96 37 500 will be your answer 35 80 net of depreciation that you will remember you will add back depreciation on uh, you'll adjust the depreciation on both the assets but you have to be careful plant and machinery may additional depreciation and building may half rate they have tested you on pgbp actually here amt credit can be carried forward very easy 15 years adjusted total income of for the purpose of amt would mean total income has increased by deduction claimed if chapter 6 uh, under income related 10 double a 35 80 net of depreciation that is all of the above where a person is subjected to amt is a unit located in ifsc deriving its income solely in convertible foreign exchange amt is levied but not at the normal rate of 18.5 at a concessional rate of 9 percent if a cc has not claimed 10 double a 35 ad or chapter 6 a income related deduction in any previous year and annual total income does not exceed 20 lakh what will happen to the amt credit of past year so listen means last year my amt was higher than my normal so i must have paid amt so there is amt credit carried forward for 15 years this year coincidentally i don't have any deduction if i don't have any deductions amt will not be applicable so i will have only normal tax i will pay that but because there is no amt i will not be able to utilize that however listen that does not mean that it will lapse the brought forward can be carried forward brought forward can be carried forward and consequently we can be carry forwarding we can be carrying forward our amt credit correct state whether true or false no interest shall be payable on amt credit obviously government will not give you any interest mr sunny has gross total income of 45 lakh under the head pgbp one of his business is eligible for deduction at 100 percent of the profits means this is pgbp so we will get deduction and the profit from such business is 20 lakh compute the amt credit to be carried forward when they say amt credit means you will calculate normal tax on 25 lakh rupees because 45 may say you will take the deduction of 20 that's the eligible profit 25 pay you will calculate normal tax 45 pay you will calculate alternate minimum tax because 45 before taking the deduction and then amt will be the high amt if higher if higher then there will be amt Great. So, we have to calculate normal tax and AMT. One more thing you can always say, sir, SSC can go in, new, go in new regime. But the fact that they are asking you AMT credit means SSC is in old regime. Otherwise, they will mention that SSC is in new regime, AMT is only not applicable. But here we will have to calculate normal tax on 25, AMT on 45 and then see if there is any credit. So, NTTI will be 45 minus 20, 25 lakhs. So, normal tax as per old regime because they are saying AMT credit. You can apply the rates. 15 lakh ka 30 percent plus 1 lakh 12,500 plus 4 percent 585 you will get and adjusted total income will be 45 lakh before deduction is pay 18.5 percent plus 4 percent if you do you get 865 800 and thus the credit to be carried forward will be 2 lakh 80,800 tax calculation I am assuming that you will be able to do on your own Mr. Hari has income of 52 lakh under PGBP one of his business is eligible for deduction the profit from such business included is 20 and what will be the tax payable now there will be three options see now they are not asking amt credit so you have to decide tax three options option one 52 may say take deduction of 20 and 32 pay calculate normal tax as per old regime then on 52 the amount before deduction that means add back the deduction taken calculate alternate minimum tax and then on 52 calculate tax as per new regime because in you will deny the deduction tax as per new regime you have the option and amt will not be applicable so we'll calculate all three we'll calculate tax on 32 lakh as per normal provisions then you'll get 22 lakh ka 30 percent plus 1 lakh 12500 plus 4 percent you will get 803400 on adjusted total income of 52 how 52 because before this deduction we have 52 18.5 teeding 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 this is 52 this was 45 so no surcharge but this is 52 and for individual after 50 lakh there will be surcharge here we did not add because ntti is less than 50 but here we will add because ati is more than 50 
so add 10 percent add 4 percent you will get 11 lakh 530 you can take round round figure that means this is your normal tax this is your amt surcharge is that area where you can go wrong but we will also calculate new regime of 52 lakh if you apply new regime 52 lakh is the income before deduction this time it will be 15 lakh minus karo so 37 lakh ka 30 percent plus 187 500 plus surcharge will come here because this is 52 lakh so surcharge will come 10 percent nhc then you will get 1484 so new regime mein tax is coming very high better to be in the old regime if you stay in old regime then amt will be applicable and if amt is applicable this will be your tax liability so final answer to my tax liability will be 1100530 rounded off if i would have been in normal tax then it would have been this but amt or normal whichever is higher new regime is optional but new may tax is coming to very high so i will stay in old regime and pay amt amt is applicable to all assesses except from certain questions do not merit our time raj has profit of 30 lakhs from business and tax as per normal provisions of income tax is less than amt means amt is higher if amt is higher what will be the liability amt what is the rate of tax applicable on assessee assuming that he wishes to avail chapter 6 therefore can i say he is in old regime if question says he is in old regime then you cannot argue he is in old regime in old regime his normal tax is coming to lower that means he will have to pay amt at what rate 18.5 mat nahi amt at 18.5 percent as it is not a company amt is not applicable to non corporate assessee who has claimed deduction under c income related chapter 6 at 10 double a 35 ad it is applicable so not applicable to anybody who has claimed ATP. The taxable income for the year for Mr. Surana resident age 32 years computed as per normal provisions is 24. So, this is NTTI. Don't get confused. This is after deduction. Earlier, the incomes given was PGBP, PGBP. So, we had to take deduction to find NTTI. This is after deduction. This is NTTI. And taxable income has computed after deduction of 2 lakh. That means, if I have to calculate normal tax, it will be on 2840. And if I have to calculate ATI, that will be 3040. And new regime also, if I have to apply, it will be on 3040. What will be his tax liability? It will be as per normal or AMT. And what will be his tax liability? Let's calculate. NTTI is 2840 as per old regime. You will calculate 1840 ka 30% plus 1 lakh 12,400 or 500 plus 4%, 691080. AMT is 30 lakh 40,000. 30 lakh 40. Adjusted total income because. 2 lakh you add back, you apply 18.5 percent plus only surcharge 4 percent. You will get this and let us try this also on the income before deduction. Old regime mein, we get 691080 but let us try the new regime also 1540 ka 30 percent plus 187500 plus 4 percent. You get this. If I stay in the old regime, it will be whichever is higher. So, this will be my liability but in new regime, I am getting lower tax. I advise the SSE to go in new regime. And as per normal, so new regime may AMT is not applicable. Normal tax of 675, 480 is going to be applicable as per the new regime. Taxable income of 2021 for Mr. Surana age 32 years is 2084 this time. And this has been computed after deduction of 5 lakh under 80 JJA. Means now we will calculate normal tax in old regime on 2084, AMT on 2584. And new regime also on 2584 tax will be as per normal or AMT. What will be tax liability? As you achha, not opted, Matla 115 BAC we don't have to do. We will calculate 2084 normal tax, 2584 AMT, whichever is higher becomes our liability that we will see. Let us see. Normal tax on 2084, 455 is 208. So that will be 1084 ka 30 plus 1, 1 lakh 12,500 plus 4 percent. And AMT on 2584, 18.5 plus 4%, 497 higher of the two, 497 as per AMT, as per AMT, huh? not as per normal, as per AMT, 497 will become our answer. Mr. Hari has income of 52 lakh under PGBP. So, wapas PGBP diya. One of his business is eligible for deduction of 100% of the profits. The profit from such business included in the business income is 35 lakh rupees. So, we will take deduction of 35 lakh. 17 lakh will be our normal tax. Compute the tax payable assuming he has no other income and credit of AMT. So, we will do three calculations. Normal tax on 17 lakhs. AMT on 52 lakhs. New regime on 52 lakhs. If new regime is beneficial, we will take it. Then no AMT credit. If old regime 
is beneficial, we will take old. And in that, if AMT is higher, then we will pay AMT and give the credit. Let's calculate. Normal tax on 17 lakhs, 7 lakh ka 30 percent, 1 lakh 12,504 percent. This you will get. AMT on 52 lakh, we had already calculated here also. Don't forget, surcharge will apply. So, 18.5 plus 10 percent plus 4 percent, 11,00528. And 52 lakh, this was already coming to higher. So, we will stay in old regime. 11,00528 or you can take round of 11,00530 and difference 765,130 will become your AMT credit. So, 11,00530 and 765,130 will be your AMT credit. Case study based question, Ganga LLP is a limited liability partnership set up in SEZ in financial year 16, 17, 16, 17, 17, 18, 18, 19, 19, 20, 20, 21, 5 years khatam. We are in the sixth year. Bolo, what is the importance? Qualifying amount ka only 50%. The unit fulfills all conditions under 10 AA for Income Tax Act. During the year 2021, it has also set up warehousing facility for storage of sugar. Achha, so 10 AA, 35 AD both. Hey, ek assessi ko both milega kya? Yes. Same assessi allowed for different business. Same business pay you don't get both. Same assessi allowed. Capital expenditure 97 including land 32. We know land is not allowed and this was capitalized on 1421. The details are given. Profit of SEZ is 60 lakh. Export turnover is given. Domestic turnover is given. That means can I say total turnover 160? Total turnover 160. Array domestic turnover plus export will give us total turnover. And 35 AD card deduction uh, profit is also given before deduction of this, this uh, uh, capital expenditure. Then Mr. Ganesh, one of the partners of LLP commenced business of manufacture of leather on 1420. His turnover in 2021, last year was 1 crore 80 lakhs and 21-22 this year is 2 crores. Payment made in 21-22 is 190. So this year turnover is 200, payment is 190. The profit in 21-22 as per books of accounts is 12 lakh 10,000, 12.1 means books ka profit. Agar presumptive nahi liya to books ka profit. Out of turnover of 200 lakhs, 190 lakh is received through RTGS and NEFT. 190 is RTGS and NEFT, Achha. and 10 is received by way of cash. In case presumptive liya, to this data will help. And out of payment of 190 lakhs made, including expenditure, in, the total payments is 190. 180 is through RTGS and NEFT, remaining 10 lakh is cash. Achha. Cash receipts and payments. Bol rahe. So, what are our total receipts? 200 lakh. Usme se only 10 is cash. So, receipts in cash, if you observe, is within 5%. But payment in cash is exceeding 5%. So, the tax audit ka, jo new limit hai na, 10 crore wala, that is not going to be available. Tax audit ka limit will be presumptive nahi liya to 1 crore and presumptive liya to 2 crore. If you take presumptive, then up to 2 crore, 2 crore is your turnover, you can take presumptive, if you take presumptive, I wish to conclude for you, if you take presumptive, are you allowed, yes, then 190 pay 6 percent we will apply and 10 pay 8 percent we will apply, but if you don't take presumptive, then audit is compulsory, because 1 crore threshold will apply, because though the cash receipts are within 5 percent, the cash payment, up check kar lena, 10 lakh is more than 5 percent of 190, okay, answer the following question. What is the amount of deduction under 10 AA and 35 AD? So, first question is on Ganga, not on the partner while computing. So, let us calculate. 35 AD is to very easy. 97 ka expenditure, land not allowed. So, 65 lakh is my answer. So, option mein 65 hai kya? Achha, 97 is not allowed. So, these two cancel. Now, between A and B, what is our answer? Profit into export upon total turnover. So, 60 into 120 divided by 160, you will get 45. Magar 45 ko choose kiya na to marega, marega, buri tarah se marega. 10 AA will be 60 into 120 by 160, 45 lakh, but we are in the 6th year. So, 50%, 22.5 and 65 lakh. And thus, 45 choose kiya to marega. 45 choose kiya to marega. 22.5, answer will be B. 50% because we are in the 6th year. What is tax liability of Ganga LLP under regular provisions? Deko. How we will find out next? This is one profit, this is other profit. Total is 220. Is 220 may say we will take our deduction. We already know our deduction. 22.5 and 65. So we will get net income. And partnership from LLP. So we will apply the LLP rate 
सो सिक्सटी लैक का एसीज प्रॉफिट में से वी आर टेकिंग एसीज डिडक्शन एसीज का टेक्सेबल इनकम 160 वेयर हाउसिंग में से वी आर टेकिंग कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर का डिडक्शन सो so, 95 टोटल टैक्सेबल इनकम 1 करोड़ थर्टी टू लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड एज पर नॉर्मल पूछा ना इट इज एल एल पी सो थर्टी परसेंट टैक्स वन करोड़ है मतलब ट्वेल्व परसेंट सर चार्ज एंड फोर परसेंट एच सी इफ यू कंप्यूट यूल गेट फोर्टी सिक्स थर्टी जीरो एट जीरो एज पर नॉर्मल प्रोविजन द इनकम इज गोइंग द टैक्स लाइबिलिटी इज गोइंग टू बी फोर्टी सिक्स थर्टी बट वॉट विल बी दी ऑल्टरनेट मिनिमम टैक्स ऑल्टरनेट मिनिमम टैक्स मतलब द डिडक्शन टेकन अंडर एस इज एडबैक What is AMT? Calculated on adjusted total income. Start with this income. Start with which income? One thirty to fifty. Add back. S E Z deduction twenty to fifty. This you will add back and add back this. But in Sundre, not the full amount. Net of depreciation. So directly, if you both add and two twenty, then you will calculate. Then you will go. Will it? No. Add twenty two point five. Add 65, but net of depreciation. What will be our adjusted total income? 60 plus 160, 220. Add back these two, but minus depreciation. 2 crore 13 lakh 50 thousand becomes adjusted total income. 2 crore 13 lakh 50 thousand becomes adjusted total income. Apply 18.5 percent. 1 crore ke baad mein firm pe 12 percent surcharge hai. 1 crore 13 lakh 50 thousand becomes adjusted total income. Apply 18.5 percent. 1 crore ke baad mein firm pe 12 percent surcharge. 4 percent H C C. 4600670 will be your answer. 4600670. Is there any AMT credit to be carried forward? देख लो भाई normal tax is forty six thirty and AMT is lower. When AMT is lower, where is the question of any AMT credit? What is the income to be declared by Mr. Ganesh? Now they are asking for AY twenty two twenty three under PGPP so that he gets maximum tax savings without audit. Audit नहीं करवाना है उसको. अभी audit नहीं करवाने का only option is देखो receipts and payments are more. देखो receipts is within five percent. बट स्टिल पेमेंट्स आर मोर देन फाइव परसेंट तो टेन करोड़ का तो ऑडिट लिमिट इज नॉट अवेलेबल ना इफ टेन इज नॉट अवेलेबल दो ऑप्शन है प्रिजम्टिव लिया तो टू करोड़ नहीं लिया तो वन करोड़ नाउ हिस्स टर्न ओवर इज टू हंड्रेड लैक्स एक्जैक्ट टू हंड्रेड इज अलाउड बट अगर ऑडिट नहीं करवाना है देन ही हैज टू टेक प्रिजम्टिव दैट मीन्स विदाउट गेटिंग बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट ऑडिटेड इफ द क्वेश्चन इज आस्किंग यू देन यू विल हैव टू फॉलो प्रिजम्टिव टैक्सेशन अंडर फोर्टी फोर एडी ही इज इन द मैन्युफैक्चर ऑफ लेदर तो 44 एडी का लेंगे एंड 2 करोड़ के ऊपर वी विल अप्लाई व्हाट इज द रेट ऑफ 44 फोर एडी इन द रियलाइज टर्न ओवर वन नाइनटी विल अप्लाई 6 परसेंट एंड इन द कैश टर्न ओवर वी विल अप्लाई 8 परसेंट अकॉर्डिंगली यूल गेट ट्वेल्व लैख ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड एज योर टैक्सेबल इनकम क्योंकि क्वेश्चन बोला ही डज नॉट वॉन्ट टू गेट बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट ऑडिटेड अगर ऑडिट नहीं करवाना है देन यू हैव टू टेक प्रिजम्टिव बिकॉज इफ यू डोंट टेक प्रिजम्टिव तो नॉर्मल और नॉर्मल में टर्नओवर का लिमिट इज वन करोड़ एंड योर टर्नओवर ओवर इज ऑलरेडी बिकम टू करोड़ दैट मींस देन यू विल हैव टू गेट ऑडिटेड सो इफ यू डोंट टेक प्रिजम्टिव यू कैन पे टैक्स ऑन योर एक्चुअल प्रॉफिट एज पर बुक्स प्रॉफिट एज पर बुक्स इज ट्वेल्व टेन ओनली लेस देन दिस अगर प्रिजम्टिव लिया तो वी आर गेटिंग ट्वेल्व ट्वेंटी वन का सिक्स परसेंट का एट बट प्रिजम्टिव नहीं लिया एंड यू गो इन नॉर्मल देन यू विल हैव ट्वेल्व टेन टैक्सेबल इनकम विल भी टेन थाउजेंड लेस बट ऑडिट विल भी रिक्वायर्ड बिकॉज योर टर्न ओवर इज एक्सीडेड वन करोड़ टू करोड़ का फैसिलिटी इज ओनली इफ यू ऑप्ट फॉर प्रिजम्टिव अदरवाइज वन करोड़ के बाद ऑडिट विल बी रिक्वायर्ड कैन मिस्टर गणेश डिक्लेयर इनकम एज पर बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट अलाउड है ट्वेल्व टेन ही कैन टेक इंस्टेड ऑफ ट्वेल्व टेन बट विदाउट ऑडिट नहीं नहीं हिज फाइव परसेंट का लिमिट इज एक्सीडेड और एक करोड़ का टर्न ओवर क्रॉस हुआ है तो ऑडिट तो ही विल हैव टू गेट इज ऑडिट डन येस 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 आर ऑल रॉन्ग नो ही कैनॉट सिंस इज टर्न ओवर एज एक्सीडेड One crore and cannot declare less than forty-four eighty without getting an audit done. Is that understood? Well then, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that was our chapter alternate minimum tax. That's about it for the day. Uh, we will continue in the next class with mat and the volume two will start. Thank you for watching. Have a nice night. Good night, please. Thank you very much.